Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we go out and onto our EcoDriver loop with the Citroen C5 X. That's a plug-in hybrid. And as usual, I do this test with empty battery. So uh, to find out uh, how efficient is the hybrid drivetrain, and also to prove that uh, plug-in hybrids are not those child-eating monsters as they are often portrayed and uh, yeah I will well, I've already done the electric range test with this car you find the link in the description box below and at the end of this video and uh, WLTP range electric range is stated with 60 kilometers and if you watch this video you will see that we of course exceeded this so uh, this car it has a 132 kilowatt uh, petrol engine, 81.2 kilowatt electric motor, and weight is 1,783 kilograms, 3,923 pounds. The capacity of the traction battery is 12.4 kilowatt hours uh, gross, but that's not important for this uh, test. We do our usual loop, as show you here. We start on the southern outskirts of Innsbruck, go out of town for about one and a half kilometers, uh, a mile. Then we start an ascent, which elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet. Followed by some rolling hills, a descent, open road or mixed road section, motorway and a city section at the end. After every one of those sections, we will check the overall and sectoral consumption. And at the end, we analyze the whole trip. The cameras will be on all the time to show A, how am I driving to achieve this consumption, and B, to prove that there is no need to be slow or to go extra slow to be efficient. On the contrary, you will see that it's not me who is the obstacle on the road. Weather is quite nice today and I uh, uh, hope you enjoy this and I'll talk to you later. We are now coming to the end of the climb and we see here 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers. We are now approaching the hills and here it's important to, as I call it, play with the road, use the momentum that you build up on the way down to go into the next flat section or uphill section and therefore reduce the amount of energy you need to go uphill, just like on a roller coaster. We are now coming to the end of the hills and we see here 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers. We are now approaching the descent and on the descent it's important with uh, relatively weak electric motors not to brake too hard as you easily exceed the uh, regenerative capacity of the motor. So if you brake too hard then the 
um, then the friction brakes come into play and then you don't waste energy you don't regenerate as much energy as possible so therefore it's important to uh, brake gently read the road try to avoid harsh braking you see the the uh, econometer up here or the, the power meter when I step on the brakes the the green bar goes into charge but as soon as I brake a little bit harder um, the bar is full so that means that uh, the electric motor is at its capac maximum capacity of regeneration and therefore um, everything above that will be done by the friction brakes. We're now coming to the end of the descent and yeah, unfortunately we had a tourist in front of us who obviously didn't know the road and didn't make, uh, didn't, uh, how shall I say, make use of the options he has in terms of building up speed for the flat sections and so on. So oh, I guess we could have done a bit better, but yeah, that's what it is. That's a real life test and we have to cope with that. At the end of the descent, we have 6.4 liters per hundred kilometers and 6% state of charge. It went up from zero. There is still no uh, distance shown, uh, electric distance, but I'm sure we could go some, some uh, kilometers purely electric. We're now coming on to the, the mixed road section. Uh, there are speed limits between 30 and 100 kilometers an hour, and hopefully we don't have those uh, slow drivers in front of us this time so that we can uh, go this, these speeds. We're now coming to the end of the open road section and we see 4.9 liters per hundred kilometers. We're now coming onto the motorway. Uh, we have a speed restriction here of 100 kilometers an hour and uh, that surely helps us with saving fuel. We're now coming to the end of the motorway and we see here 4.9 liters per hundred kilometers. Now on the last section of the day, city section, it's uh, recommendable to 
try to avoid braking, try to avoid coming to a standstill. Of course, it's, it's not possible all the time, but just try to avoid it and um, therefore you avoid uh, subsequent re-acceleration when you, if you don't need to brake or if you don't brake. So that saves a lot of energy, therefore uh, try to read the road, look ahead, try to anticipate what other road users might be doing. Okay, we're now at the end of our trip on the Eco Traveler with the Citroen C5X and um, after turning the engine off we see here 5.2 liters uh, per 100 kilometers. We did 50 kilometers uh, fully electric. And now the details. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the detailed overall and sectoral consumption of the trip with the Citroen C5X. You see here in MPG UK and MPG US as well but I don't think this car will be sold in the US so it's just for information or if somebody from the US uh, watches this channel and this uh, is interested in this car or in some quirky European cars and here we have the table with all the plug-in hybrids I've tested so far and uh, yes you see the the outside temperature was okay nice weather uh, summer tires in this part of the world we normally change from summer to winter tires as this is quite a distinct uh, a distinct difference in conditions and it makes sense um, the car is equipped with a eight speed torque converter automatic gearbox uh, unladen weight uh, driving time was average due to traffic and you have already seen the detailed consumption, so the overall 5.2. Uh, well, that's, uh, if you compare this with the with his brother from Stellantis, the Peugeot 308, it's pretty much the same considering the higher weight and therefore, yeah, the same drivetrain delivers pretty much the same result. And this also shows that 
the tests I do or my testing procedure is quite consistent. So um, that's some kind of validation for myself that I know it, it works. And yes, 5.2 liters per hundred kilometers for a 1. Point, almost 1.8 ton vehicle is not too bad considering um, it's a plug-in hybrid and some people claim they, they use double the amount of fuel uh, than the non-hybrid car and uh, if they are not charged. And as we have proved several times already, you see all the cars I've tested so far here, uh, that's just a lot of BS. A little bit of understanding of the technology, how it works, what do I need to do to get the best out of this technology helps. And in the end, uh, yes, uh, 5.2 liters per hundred kilometers plus you get some electric range as well. Um, I don't think it's too bad, but it needs to be said that the principles of eco driving uh, look ahead, read the road, try to avoid change of speed, try to avoid braking and therefore subsequent. Um, uh, re-acceleration and just keep the vehicle in motion and uh, try to reduce uh, just try to brake as little as possible even if the car recuperates or regenerates still it's a loss of energy um, talking about the uh, electric range I have done uh, the electric range test with this car earlier today before this test uh, that's why the battery was empty and uh, the result i think is rather impressive of course we exceeded the wltb range and if you want to see how this went then uh, you can click on this video here and if you're generally interested in plug-in hybrids and how to drive them more efficiently then you'll find my five tips down here that's it for the citroen c5x thanks for watching take care see you next time